I'm here to talk to you guys today about launching successful VR and AR games with Google. Uh, before we do that, it, I just want to kind of set the stage and say how important VR and AR are to our mission here at Google. We see them as kind of the, the striking bound of being the fourth generation of computing. So again, if you think about that supercomputer back at IBM's headquarters years ago to when Dell really made the PC kind of uh, approachable, um, to the point that now we all have a supercomputer in our pockets, we see VAR and AR as leading to that next gen mixed reality world of computing that we're hoping to be in in the next five years. Um, so with us, how have we kind of started to kind of hit the scale on that, on that particular kind of achievement is through Daydream and Tango. So we launched Daydream on November 10th of 2016 at a $79 price point. Um, and Daydream itself wasn't just a headset, it was actually a standard of phones, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, and at the same time, we actually launched our AR device, which is Tango, um, which is a software stack built directly into the hardware of phones, and that launched with the Lenovo Fab2 Pro. So we're really, really excited, and you'll continue to see these two platforms evolve over the next two years. So when I start to talk about Daydream, it's really important that we separate the headset from the actual standard of phones. So Daydream Ready is what we, what we have built into the hardware, which is really about low persistence displays, it's about low latency, high quality sensors, and it's about higher performing SOCs. To achieve that, we've built directly into Android N um, in order to give us sustained performance, head tracking, and system UI, which we're really, really excited about. Um, as part of that, we actually just launched two new games on Daydream, along with all the other games and apps that we currently have since November. Uh, when we think about gaming with Daydream, we really think about kind of three major categories for gaming. The first, we think about fictional teleportation narratives, which is really about breaking that barrier of why I would put a headset on and why I would want to immerse myself uh, and isolate myself from the community around. Uh, the second kind of type of gaming that we really think about is connected experiences. Because what we don't want to do is, is isolate ourselves too much. So we really want to think about how we collaborate in the same virtual space together. Uh, and the third kind of way is thinking about adrenaline rushes. Things that are going to get my heart pumping, whether it's racing with EA's Need for Speed or going through a kind of a haunted house maze with layers of fear by Aspire. So we're really, really excited to kind of see what you guys can come up with and how we can get that into our platform. When it comes to Tango, it's really important that we think about software that brings a human scale to the world. It's still a phone, it's still looking through a magic window, but it's taking advantage of motion tracking, so full six degrees of freedom. It's taking advantage of depth perception, which is really about scale and geometry and getting as close to an object as you need to be, or as far back from an object, and it showing you real world what that object looks like. Um, and when you combine these two things together, you get what's called area learning, which we're really excited about. So being able to drop objects into this room, for example, in augmented reality, leaving the room, leaving the building, even leaving the city, and coming back and finding those objects exactly where you left them, which we're really, really excited about. When we think about Tango, we're really thinking about mobile games that can be enhanced with this augmented reality today. We're really thinking about tabletop gaming which, again, if we're all playing in a world around us and bringing those characters to life right in front of us. Or we're thinking about the living playground, being able to bring virtual pets into our space or bringing this room to life. And so we're really excited again to see what you guys can come, out, come up with. And we're demoing some of those cool new games uh, at our booth starting on Wednesday. So as you start to think about, okay, these are great, these, these platforms seem really cool, but how do I actually get discovered? Well, we've got discoverability across both. The first is our Daydream VR Play Store, which when you go into the headset, you go directly into. Uh, Daydream VR Play Store has full IAP built directly into it, and every user of Daydream is required to have a form of payment on file. So we're really, really excited about driving monetization for our developers. On the Tango side, we continue to evolve how collections work on the 2D Play Store to, again, allow for discoverability for our developers. Um, you can self-publish via Play Dev Console today for either platform. We know we heard our developers loud and clear. We did launch 
with a more curated platform for Daydream, and that was really to put our processes in place and kind of set the bar of what quality means in VR, but we absolutely encourage everyone today to go ahead and self-publish. And we want to take advantage of all that great organic content that you guys are already working on and bring it to the forefront for our users. Directions on how to do it are located on our website, but we really recommend for monetization really thinking about a try before you buy model. We know users really want to understand duration of what they're purchasing. They want to understand the environment of where they're going to be, and, we really, and they really want to understand the quality of what you're delivering. So for us, as we've kind of learned over the last three, four months, we really push developers to think about what does this try before you buy model look like. So thank you very much. Yeah.